you, um, your career is amazing. You've had so much success in so many different disciplines. But one thing I, I, I always admired is that you could go in straight into a new discipline as a rookie and win straight away. How did you get the confidence in the cars to be able to do that? I don't know, I just learned, I, I adapt really easy. And I think I always tend to figure out things pretty easy and things come very natural to me. You know what I mean? I think that's one of the things. And I think I just won them badly enough and badly enough that it just makes it happen. You know what I mean? I want it more than anybody else. It's a bit like Mario Andretti, you know, that he won in a, in a lot of different disciplines. Are you actually proud of that fact, looking back on, on the career that you've had so far? That you I, don't, I think it's cool that I've been able to win at everything I've driven. Um, but that's kind of my job, isn't it? <laughs> that's kind of in the job description. You're meant to win. You know, you don't, you don't get hired by a team to go and run 15 every week. And you know what I mean? So you always try your best. You always drive as hard as you can. And you always put you know, the effort in. If you look back on your career, you, obviously, you've got so much success in so many different categories. If you had your time again, would you do the same thing? Or would you stick around, say, in, in, in Formula One, try and win, absolutely make sure to try and win the World Championship? Or? Well, I think I realized after being you know, six years in Formula One, I, I thought, if you're not in the right car in the right time, and you're the guy that won, you know, that the team won to win the championship with, you're not gonna win it. It's that simple. And I felt that I gave it a good shot. I had chances of fighting for the championship, and that for me was huge. I've won all the races, all the right races I won. I'll tell you the truth, the one I never won and I was kind of disappointed was Malaysia. I love Malaysia. That's probably my favorite track, and I was so good there. And uh, we, you know, I got tangled with Michael so many times on the starts, and we threw away so many races together. It was kind of funny. You um, are one of a handful of drivers who's won two of the three uh, classic events, the Indy 500, the Monaco Grand Prix, and the Le Mans 24 hours. Yeah. Only one guy has ever won all three of them, Graham Hill. So how big an unfinished piece of business is Le Mans 24 hours for you? Uh, five years ago, couldn't care. Um, today, maybe if, if I had a shot to be in the right car, I would think about it. but. I'm so happy at IndyCar right now. I, I really love what I do. I love running for Roger. Um, and I'll tell you the truth, I've been, I've been lucky enough to say that I've driven for the best teams in the world. Like, you know, you talk about America, you would talk about Tim Penske and Ganassi. You know what I mean? You, you talk about, you know, McLaren, you talk about Williams. You look at the history of them. i um, being able to say you, you raced with all of them and you won with all of them. That's pretty damn cool. <laughs> Um, obviously, you're aware Formula One at the moment is going through a bit of a transitional phase. First of all, your thoughts on Formula One as it is today? I think we need to start from the beginning. I think it's, it's amazing technology. And, and the problem is I don't think the fans understand how much it goes into that technology. There's a lot of cool things that that average person don't understand. So I think a lot of that technology is lost in translation, I think. Um, I think it's... Uh, the idea of the smaller engines, I think, is a good idea. Um, I think the big thing is, there are two things, and one they're trying, you know, I think they help correct it is, is limit how young guys get into the series because the reason you have all that, you know, all this, you know, ladder series is to build you as a driver. So when you get a chance, you prepare for it. And nowadays, people are jumping in really young where they've done a year racing and and that I'm fine from a one car is that hard to drive. You know, when we did it, you know, from one car was 10, 12 seconds quicker than a GP2 car. So that jump was massive. And going forward, obviously, they're trying to figure out how they can change the sport, Formula One, from 2017 on, onwards, make the cars more aggressive, obviously make them faster, like you're saying, like they used to be when you drove them, um, that kind of stuff. What If you had to pick up a, a two or three things that you would love to see Formula One Pursuing for 2017, what would they be? Uh, probably a lot more grip. You know what I mean? Grip in a way that you can follow people. I think the biggest struggle always in Formula One, the cars are so efficient that it's very hard to follow people. See, the racing is not close enough. Um, and that's one of the things like in the IndyCar, you get, you know, we got a lot more downforce. You know, we got big wings and things, so you can follow people closer, so the racing is a little closer. You mentioned IndyCar and, and the close racing. There's a big debate going on at the moment in the US yeah. about danger against that you face oh, yeah. versus entertainment, 
for the crowd, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, where do you stand on that? It, uh, it's hard because the closer you are, the more people are going to enjoy. But having close racing is very different, in my opinion, to have going five wide into a corner where they don't really fit and, and you're playing, you know, who's, you know, who's the bravest of them all. I think what IndyCar needs to do is find a, a right balance of, okay, how do we make close racing that we got now with a way to complete the passes? The biggest problem we, I found was it was really hard to complete the pass. Um, you're big on Twitter. You've got over a million followers. That's something that obviously has come in relatively recently in, in your career. How, how helpful is that to a driver, to have a direct relationship with the fans, to be able to tell them directly what you're thinking and also to be able to get feedback from them? Um, I use it more, not so much for the racing side, it's, but it's to give, you, to give people access to see who I am outside the races. And people get to see that and it, it, I think it separates what people see in the stardom and that you know, big star driver and just the normal human being.